I was boxed in on a hill in Seattle. Classic Seattle move. And there was Jane Goodall in the front seat of my car. So I was white knuckled on the steering wheel and had a death grip on the parking brake. And I was taking another deep breath. And at that moment, she just reached over and touched me on the knee and said, don't worry, dear. That's what bumpers are for. This moment captured the spirit of my lifelong hero, Dr. Jane Goodall. She inspired me to study biology, ecology, and conservation. I once held her field journals in a visit to the first Jane Goodall Institute offices and coincidentally went on to do my master's thesis in science journaling. And then when I met her in person, she let me know that teachers were her heroes. So I became one. You might say that we are each other's heroes. And in that role as a teacher, I've had time to travel, to marvel at people and landscapes, plants and animals of this magnificent planet. And at last, I walked in the footsteps of Dr. Jane Goodall at the Gombe Field Research Station in Gombe National Park in Tanzania. There, one of her early Roots and Shoots students, Edie Klaus, was my guide. Together we hiked to Jane's Peak and Kakombe Waterfall, and we scurried off trail to track and sit with the famous wild chimpanzees. Once, when I emerged from a thicket of vines, I had two spots of blood on my forehead that Edie noticed and wondered if I was okay. I wiped them away with a sweat of my brow and a smile, and I said, yeah, <laughs> I'm following in the footsteps of Jane. Yet where following her footsteps matters most is my classroom. Perhaps it's the fact that Jane was an untrained scientist, and that inspires me to teach middle school students. Every middle school student is full of wonder. Is it untrained scientists themselves who brings joy and curiosity and a desire to know about how the world works with an unbridled enthusiasm in its purest form? What a great opportunity. In the words of another conservationist, Rachel Carson, she says, if a child is to keep alive their inborn sense of wonder, they need the companionship of at least one adult who can share it rediscovering the joy, excitement, and mystery of the world we live in. I believe that for many of my students, I am one of those adults, just like Jane was for me when I was a kid. She was one of the first naturalists I'd ever read about, and perhaps one of the first living women scientists I was ever exposed to. She became a role model for me in her tenacity and grace, and showed me that field work was science, and science was field work. I look up to Jane. And now, following Jane's footsteps means my career commitment to teaching and nurturing youth to become avid observers, global citizens, and stewards of their local environment. Perhaps what's most significant about my passion for environmental education is the way I've incorporated district-adopted curriculum into my year-long focus of sustainability. Students in my class are hands-on, minds-on, inquiry-based learning activities that are with contextual storylines where they make a difference with sustainable action projects like the Clean Water Challenge, Polymers for the Planet, or phenomenon-based inquiry units like one connecting the thermodynamics of lava lamps to the climate impact of sea level rise. You see, it's a big job being curious. If you're a kid, keep being curious. You can't help it. If you're a parent or an aunt or an uncle, cultivate it in those kids and support it. Be patient with it. And as an adult, slow down, pay attention, and simply be curious. I think it's the bumper story that really sticks with me as a guide for how Jane lived her life. She said, if you really want something and you really work hard and take advantage of opportunities and never give up, you will find a way. Jane took advantage of opportunities. In the face of challenges, she found her bumpers, and she found a way. I, too, found my own way. Guided by Jane's holistic view of conservation, community, and compassion. I teach because I believe young scientists will make a difference in the world. 
And I teach because their inborn sense of wonder inspires me, as Jane did, to make a difference. So whose footsteps do you want to follow? And what difference do you want to make? Thank you.